Alright, I'm going to show you how to make fire in your microwave with a grape, a green grape. But as I just said, it's fire, so you probably want to be careful if you're going to try this. Now, first things first, you get a grape, preferably green, I'll explain that later. But you cut it in half, length, or cut it in half like this. It doesn't matter what side you use. I'm going to use this guy, side cut, it's a little bit bigger. And then you take this side and you cut it in half again, except not all the way through. You cut it only down to where there's just still a little piece of skin attached, kind of like that. All right. And then you get. All right. Here we have my grape sliced open and put in the microwave. And I will explain all this after I show you all the fun stuff. I'm going to put it in. Do about 10 seconds. That usually does it. Let's watch. There we go. Alright, that's what I like to see. And there's our grape afterwards, nice and crispy. Okay, another neat trick you can do is put a glass on top of the grapes, which will capture all the heat escaping and all that light. And hopefully it will give us a nice light show. I will do another 10 seconds. Hey. Alright, well that died out quickly. Ah, there we go. Let's take a look. Oh, look at that. That cup is completely filled with smoke from the grapes. And it is hot. Yeah, it's nice. And there's our beautiful little grape. And now for the explanation. As you can see, this is the inside of my microwave, complete with grape. And over here is where all the fun starts. Inside here, there's this little machine. This is how microwaves work. There's this little machine, and it has a charged particle that moves it up and down really quickly. And when this happens, there's these microwaves that are emitted, and they come out, and they shoot around, they bounce around these walls until they find water. And what it does when it hits water is it shakes the water molecules, therefore creating heat, which is how these things heat things. All right, and inside over here, we have our grape, which, as you should know, have water in them. And a key factor is that these grapes are green, and this means that it has some certain chemicals with long names that you don't need to know. And this enhances this process just slightly, which makes it a better light show. Okay, now what happens over here is we have these microwaves that shoot out, and eventually it's going to come, it's going to hit this way. It's going to hit this grape because it's coming from the right side. So when it does, let me get a zoom in, it's going to hit this grape, and there's this little section right there, and these microwaves are going to pass through, through the other, to the other grape. And this is what we call a dielectric or dipole antenna. Let me flatten this out. Usually it's a flat surface, but this grape's not too great. But anyways, so we have these wavelengths, these waves, that they go into this grape, and they're going to go through this other one. But since these grapes have all this water and all these chemicals, it's going to intensify these waves and make them more powerful. And when this happens, the wavelengths decrease and the frequency increases. And the basics of this is, when this happens, these invisible microwaves that we cannot see turn into light. And that's why we see the sparks and the glow and the fire. So we have these low intensity waves that go into this grape. They get intensified with all the other ones. They shoot through, we see color, and then they come out the other end. It's just like a mirror process right there. Now, a key factor here is that I have removed the turntable, as you can see, which is would be this thing over here. And what this means is that as the wavelengths come in through the right grape and go out, it's constant. Whereas if the turntable were in process, it would be going something like this. And if we were at this point, that means that the wavelengths would come along and hit both of these at the same time, which would not give us that little arc that we see. So that's how we want. Another key point is the power. Now, as you can see, mine is 1,000 watts, and it's 935. And this means, if you can figure it out, higher wattage means that this little particle moves faster and faster, therefore making the wavelengths shorter and st shorter and shorter. So, if it was a very low wattage microwave, this would be like the point at where the microwave is. It would go something like this. Right? But if it's high, it'll go like this. Right? And so, down here we have a grape. 
and this is called the dielectric antenna needs to be half of the wavelength and when it is this it captures all the energy from the wave and so and this is about I'd say two centimeters which means that if we have wattage that makes a two centimeter or well a four centimeter wavelength we have good fire and stuff so which is why if you need like more than a thousand watts to get this kind of wavelength so 1300, 1400 would do very good for this and that's basically it so once again waves come out they're squiggly they hit this one, they're intensified, they shoot out, you see color, and they go away. And that's it.